What's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of Dr. Wandy. This is a special segment where we talk about you and your problems. And we all know, we all got a lot of problems. By the way, I'm not a real doctor. If you've been enjoying these segments, click on the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the little bell for notifications for the next video. Enjoy! This one has a lot of stuff in it that I feel like is not something that I can really address, but I'll read it anyways. Hi, I'm a 17 year old male. There's a lot of explaining. I actually get into the problem. I actually get into the problem, but let's get this started. I have autism to be more specific Asperger's. I do take anti-anxiety meds. I have extreme social anxiety and I vomit a lot because of school. I do have a therapist, but I'm not too open with him because of my extreme trust issues. And even if you tell me to talk to him more, I'm going to be honest, I won't. I'm adopted and not too close to my family because I don't see them as my real family because we're not related by blood. Due to my anxiety, I don't go out a lot and thus I'm not interested. I'm not in the greatest shape. I'm quite fat. I'm a junior in high school, but I've worked hard to graduate early and will be going to college next fall. Just think this now. I won't talk to my parents about the problem because it's too embarrassing to. I want to become an English major with Japanese as a minor. I want to become a teacher for ESL in Japan. Now to the problem, while I'm extremely lonely, I want to get a girlfriend, but I've never been interested in any girl before, but I want to experience love and to be loved. I just can't communicate with people in general, though it is good I am more comfortable sharing my feelings with women more than men. I don't know what is love and so how do I know when I like someone? My heart feels like a hole at times and the ironic thing is I love watching romance and reading romance. I want that experience though, you know? I don't know where to start and don't know what to do after starting. Since I'm going to college, all the dorms there are co-ed and I'm really scared now since I have little to no experience with women in general. So I don't know what to do when living with one. You're not really living with one. So how should I handle this? It hurts sometimes, I'm just so lonely. <sighs> <clears throat> actually yeah i do agree with ricky here find a therapist that you do trust more or even find a female therapist since you said that you have um an easier time opening up to them honestly there is a billion questions here but all of them can be answered by alleviating your social anxiety but it will be very difficult for you since you tell me yourself that you have Asperger's, which means you have a lot of trouble with social cues and things that people would just not have trouble with usually. So I feel like your first step is actually opening up to professionals that could help you. You're not gonna have a good time trying to figure this out on your own. <clears throat> Social anxiety group sessions. Yeah, I think that can help too, for sure. I think it's kind of a tough situation here because you probably didn't grow up with the happiest family life. Um, so it is just difficult all around. So I don't really have a lot to say about this one because there's a lot going on. There's a lot of questions and I think a lot of them will unravel themselves and like will be answered once you address the first one. So yeah, good luck. Let's see here. This one is 22 year old male and a 19 year old girlfriend. My ex and her friend seems to be peeping at my in and my Instagram. They have lot They have lot this sounds like last week's story. <clears throat> this is like This sounds like a very similar story that I read last week. Anyways, they have a lot of accounts and the accounts that are fake. We both dealt with stalkers, long story short. My ex blames me for everything that happened, which is not my fault, but there were ways to stop it and do something about it. We both are single and heartbroken. I'm still a little bit heartbroke from her, but she is heartbroken from her other ex-boyfriend. Not until December we all cut off communication, but they still want to check me out. 
I can because they blocked me and have their accounts private. Not that I care to look, but I don't know, lol unfair, kinda. Maybe she still hates me? I've been doing my best to change and bloom. Why hold a grudge? Maybe I really did hurt her and we've been together for two years. Longer than any of our other of our recent relationships. Known each other for four years. Weird. Is there any way to try to find closure, especially for her? Do I just let her be and not care about the peeping? I wish I can help and do everything that I couldn't do for her. I was a shitty boyfriend, but I realized it, took it, and learned from it. That's all I can do, right? Uh, you should not care about her peeping and just move on. That's my number one advice. I mean, I don't think they're talking, so it's not about ghosting. Yeah, you should just let her be and not really care about what she does. The best way for you to move on and bloom is by being the best you and not caring about your ex. That's the only way. You have to just not care. I mean, I know it's hard. It's like, haha, don't care, forehead. But it's true. You have to try your best to just like focus on doing your own stuff and not think about or look at her stuff. So don't check up on her either. And <clears throat> do your own thing. And eventually, after some time, you start to forget about them. You really do. They won't be the first thing on your mind anymore. They might be the last thing on your mind or maybe you'll think about them like once every few days. And after once every few days, once every week, once every month, once every two months, once a year, never. <laughs> I don't really, I don't really think about my exes. <laughs> Seriously. It's like, why would I think about them? There was, I, I think I told you guys this before, but there was this one point in time I dated my first boyfriend for like two and a half years, right? And there was one point in time where I completely fucking forgot his name. And it took me like a whole day to remember his name. I'm like, what the fuck? Like my brain literally erased him out of like existence from my mind. Like I forgot his name. I was like, what? No, it pissed me off because I was like, I can't remember that stupid fuck's name. <laughs> My brain. I was trying to like talk about him. And I was like, fuck, what was his name? I can't remember. It's so weird because you go from like remembering everything about them to like not remembering anything. Like you start to kind of like kind of forget what they look like. And then you don't remember their address anymore. You don't remember their phone number anymore. You don't remember like their car or anything you just don't remember you only remember yeah the feelings that you had pretty much <clears throat> now nah, there's no way he would be watching and even if he was i don't care you think i give a shit about something that happened like 10 years ago <laughs> it was not kevin our next entry title getting laid off from my job i'm going to be getting laid off from my job soon as a programmer I've been working as a programmer for roughly seven years and at this point in my career, I'm burnt out of programming. I even tried a position that has significantly less programming and this new position made me hate my job more. Question. Should I try to find a new career by going to school again or try to find a new job in my current career programming career? Thanks. Uh, If you really hate it so much and you're okay with going back to school, I would say just go back to school and pursue something new. But if you're afraid that you won't find something like that you're super interested in or like it's better for you to just be in a more secure position and find a new job in a similar field, then you should just stick to your field. Because honestly... You know, you work the same, you're gonna be working a very similar job for many, many years. Uh, the only thing you could work towards is like maybe doing something similar but different or uh, promoting and doing something higher up, right? So, <clears throat> personally, I would say if you really hate it, right? Like if it literally like you can't get up out of bed every day because you hate your job so much, I would say pursue something new. 
but if this is just like a slump and you're feeling like you really hate your job right now but maybe you can still tolerate it maybe maybe not switch but it's up to you to weigh your choices i think now our next entry i'm male 22 ha who has been dating a female 24. Me and this girl both met on our college campus and really got along great together, which led to us both dating. However, this all changed when the, coronavi when the coronavirus attacked and we both... This sounded like the Fire Nation! Why did you write it like this? And we both had to go back home and this led to my girlfriend moving back to Europe while I was in the US, which made us entire countries apart. <laughs> so my girlfriend and I decided to do a long distance relationship until we could get back together in person. However, since we started dating online, she has been a lot more distant towards me and seems like she's losing interest in me. My question is, any way I can engage with her being so far apart and relight her interest in me? It all changed when the coronavirus attacked. Um... That's hard, dude. So long distance is really hard. If you, if she loses distance, if she loses interest in you, I feel like it's gonna be really hard for her to regain it back. Maybe like talking. I don't know why she like. Maybe think about why potentially she like really liked you in the first place. Uh, I don't know. Is there like? Can you watch stuff together? Play a game together? Do something interactive together? Uh, I don't know, like, I think with distance because she doesn't ever see you. Do you guys video call, voice call, etc, etc? Et Can you give her a gift somehow? I don't know, it's, uh, it's hard. Long distance is really hard, for sure. That's why I never, I never, ever, ever, uh, suggest, like, suggest it or like I never really support most people pursuing a long distance relationship especially if they can't handle it most people can't I mean I'm barely like it is long distance but it's like we practically live together <laughs> so it's it's like less so because it's like I, we visit each other often. <clears throat> so it's like... There's barely that distance being felt. Ryan, thank you so much for the 32 months. Welcome back. Yep, there's sleep together on call, do things on the call, cry together, laugh together, watch stuff together, play games. Yep. There is all of that for sure. But if you've already been doing all of that and she seems to be losing interest, then it's sadly over. Yeah. Good luck, friend. I'm 23 male and I work as a tech person. I'm new to the company and it's a pretty big company. I'm starting to feel worried hearing some companies are laying off people because of the vi virus. How should I assess the situation or what should I do if I'm at risk or not? Just worried to be fired. I can't, nobody can tell you anything about your situation besides people in the office. Uh, I mean, I guess like what you could do is stock up on some stuff and then save your money and don't spend too much because if you do get laid off, Nobody's working. Literally, people are either working from home or nobody's working and not working. So. I know there is, uh, in some countries, I don't know what country you're from, but you can apply for some stuff. The government is setting up some stuff for like unemployment, some kind of grant every couple weeks or something. I know it's available in Canada and maybe US. Um, I know there's a mortgage waiver. Um, thanks for gifting us up to Janny and MX Duo. Thanks for the five months. Ooh, the scam train. Carrot. Carrot. 
Um, so yeah, I mean, I don't know what to tell you, but you're still young. Don't fret too much. I think hopefully when the virus blows over, uh, everybody will be back to working and the economy can stop dying. Everybody's dying right now. Everybody's suffering. You're not alone. At least you're not alone, right? <laughs>